Welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football YouTube channel. Every single Thursday, what we're going to be doing is looking at the 10 most traded players right now in fantasy football, in redraft leagues. We're going to tell you whether or not we are buying, selling, or holding them, right? We're trying to do this a little differently than everybody does in, in the industry where they're like, these are my trade targets. These are the guys I like. These are the guys buy low, sell high, whatever. This is based on data being pulled from 2,807,047 trades from real fantasy football leagues via Sleeper, via FFPC, whatever. These are really, really happening, all right? This data is free to see on fantasycalc.com under the trending players tab so we will move down i think we should move from the 10 spot up to the up to the one spot all right That's a lot of trades. and we'll reveal them as they happen the very first player on this list is ramondre stevenson steven stone so are you buying you selling or you holding this is based on just which one's performing i'm ready sir show them Woo! sell sell buy okay well, we did a full running back rankings debate video yesterday. Every Wednesday, we'll be doing a top 36 running back rankings, top 36 wide receiver rankings, so make sure you sub for that. We talked about Ramondre a little bit. I just think off the first game, bad Bengals defense. Patriots will never have game script like that. Gibson was hurt. I think he involves himself a little bit more as it goes forward. So I just don't necessarily want to buy running backs in bad teams, on bad teams, on bad offenses, bad offensive lines. I agree, and I'm, I'm also going to add just on the sell argument here, I think kind of the upside for Ramondre here is like a, a very low upside type of RB2. If anybody values him as a high-end RB2, maybe higher than like a guy that most weeks is going to finish between like 16 and 24, then I'm willing to go sell him for somebody like that. So sure. um, just just don't really see a lot of ceiling for Ramondre Stevenson. He had a good week one. It was definitely not what we expected because we didn't expect that type of Patriots uh, offense, but – that being said, it was an overperformance from the Patriots as a whole, and I think we just capitalize off of that with the sell on Stevenson. Back toys. I guess I just struggle with your entire sentiment. If if that week last week didn't show you that he had some kind of a ceiling, like what are we doing? Are we, I mean, I mean, are we viewing this guy as a top twelve guy ever? No, but if you can sell him as a top twelve guy, I mean, that means you can pivot to like. I guess that's part of the question: is what do you, what can you actually sell him for, right? Let's list a couple running backs. Would That's you, what I was going to say. Let's, yeah. do it. let's do it like uh, would you rather, I guess, too. Okay. Him or let's go with Alvin Kamara. Kamara. Come Kamara on. for sure, right? Okay. David Montgomery. Monty. D-Mop. Najee Harris. Najee. Najee. Uh, okay. We're in the ballpark. I still think I prefer Najee. I do, too. Okay. Slightly. Okay. Tony Pollard. Tony P. Pollard. Aaron Jones. 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 Who are, the, who are those guys are you taking over Ramondre? I'm t- or Ramadre over. I, I think right now, like obviously the first ones I named, there should should be Kamara, them, uh, Montgomery, even. I think Tony Pollard and Najee Harris are very very fair conversations to flip the other side easily. Agreed. Like, they're, they're good conversations. I just prefer the other backs. But over can there. I tell you why? the The conversation I think is that Ramadre Stevenson has not shown yet after one week that he does not get the pass catching work. That's fair. Those guys I know don't. Fair. Uh, I mean Tony Pollard caught like four balls. Right, but. T- Tajay Spears is that that team led the whole game. If when Tajay Spears is probably going to be more of the receiving down work guy yeah. than than Tony Pollard is. He could be. I I just think you know we've had a lot of. The I kind of think it's the same argument with him and like you. What you just said was like what I said for Gibson though too. So you think that Tajay Spears and Gibson are going to have similar roles? I'm just saying like I don't think that we know that Tony Pollard is not going to be the pass catching back when we just also just saw him get catches. Well, Tony Pollard, like Tajay Spears, currently in that offense, I know it's completely different. Organiz- like the organization last year, he was the pass catching work guy. Yeah. So he could very easily still stay that. Antonio Gibson was signed into a situation where Ramondre was currently the pass catching back guy. Yeah. So I, I, I think there's a case to be made that Ramondre Stevenson has a higher ceiling than all of them. And if Ramondre was to get the pass catching work, I think there's a case to be made where he's a lot higher value than what we're thinking of him today because he's one of the few running backs that gets all the work. And bad offense or not, I think there's a case to be made here. You could end up being closer to a running back one. So when I say buy, it's partly because in, in redraft, if I buy him and let's say he doesn't get the pass catching work, I, I maybe overspent a little bit, but he's probably just in a muddled part of the running back position in fantasy football. I want to shoot my shots on the guys that can actually be closer to top 15, top 12 running backs. Those are the ones that are going to help you win. Yeah, no, that, that's fair. I think Ramondre is coming off a really big game, so it's hard to be like, He's going to be bad. He's going to be worse, et cetera. He's not, he's not weekly going to get that many carries, I'm I, sure. I feel like I respect it a little bit more. I mean, I respect, obviously, being convicted and by, but I feel like if it was a hold because you want to see that pass-catching role continue, I'd feel a little bit better about you that. Don't, he would only respect you then. 
if you thought after, after now respect levels if you thought four. after i cooked that you weren't gonna respect me it's gonna be a long season fair my enough, boy fair all enough. right let's move to the woat chris alave is number nine on the list oh, are you buying man. are you selling or are you holding i don't know how we got here but we're here flip them buy okay i was between buy and hold i'm actually a hold until we see a big game and then probably <clears throat> a sell okay Fair. Well, t- well, then let you, let's let you cook. Go ahead. I mean, it, it just comes down to, you know, obviously Carolina, they score 47 fucking points. He has a zero game. We see Rashid Shaheed get the shots downfield, him connect on a touchdown. I think when they're playing real defenses, it's going to be a problem for their offense. And I just, this Chris Olave feels like he's continuing to go down the Terry McLaurin path. Where, like, just because a player is really good doesn't mean we're going to see his fantasy ceiling come to fruition. And if week one is any indication of that, we're in for another 1,000-yard season, six touchdowns, and he'll have better games, of course. I'm not expecting a fucking two-for-15 game every single week. But as a dude who has name value in the second round and seeing what we just saw, I don't think it's an overreaction to expect 1,000 yards because that's, like, around what we were probably Fair. expecting, and it's like you're already starting slow. It's like that's probably going to happen. Fair. I don't know how much weight I'm going to put into that week one game. It was very odd. It wasn't necessarily that much to take away from it. That being said, though, you know, I I just view him a little bit more as a buy because if people are panicking, because I think the narrative coming into the season was that, you know, this is make or break for Chris Olave. We've kind of had this hope for a couple years now. And then week one, he goes out and has that weird game script and doesn't perform. Maybe people are just like, oh, shit, like this is not what I wanted when I drafted Chris Lave. He already mm-hmm. felt it, you know, risky as well. I'm okay buying into that narrative. Like, I, I don't even know what the, the buy low price would be for him right now. I think the reality is, is everybody who drafted Chris Lave probably won't sell him to you low after week one. Okay, so maybe not sell low. Let's compare him to the other receivers that absolutely went fucking dud last, last week. Rest of the season, and these are guys that I think got drafted in like really similar spots. Rest of the season, Alave or Drake London. Uh, I'd go London. Still lean London. I would go London as well. Marv? Marv. Or a lot Marv. Marv. I'd go Marv as well. These feel like guys that are, were ahead of a lot of and drafts. Anyways, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Puka was ahead of him, but... Yeah, let's keep going. But Puka, you're probably... I mean, if you can sell Puka for a while, I'm not trying right to, like, buy that. players that are on the IR for sure. Yeah. It's just not like a... Redraft, I, like redraft is just it's tough to do that. Yeah. yeah, we spend all that time draft prepping, and then one week after the season, we can't well, even I'm, remember. I'm what actually, the I, I want to, I almost want, I want to pull up the board from our draft actually. Sure. So it's super flex, obviously, but Alave fell to the fourth round. He was the four ten. So I'll start with the receivers drafted in round four. Okay. Cooper Cup was before him. Obviously, you're taking you, Cup over him. DJ Moore. Um. DJ Moore. For me, I don't even hesitate. That's more for me. I'm open to Alave in that situation. Okay. Uh, Jalen Waddle. Well, I'll take Waddle. Waddle. Uh, okay, so these are guys that went behind Chris Olave, Devontae Adams. I'm taking Olave. I'm taking Adams. That's a really good conversation. I'm like so split on that, honestly. I yeah. think I, I think I could make a case either way. I think I might lean Olave. I do not see the Adams this year. Yeah. I don't. I think he's burnt toast. Okay. Really, Debo. That's, Debo. That's Debo. easy. Debo. Debo. Rashi Rice. Rashi. Rashi. Rice. Like these were the guys that were going behind. Ayuk went behind him. Pittman went behind him. I might take Alave over Pittman. I wouldn't. I don't think I would either. I don't know. And this, this that, that offense with Anthony Richardson, you know, he's going to be good for fantasy football. There's a lot of inaccuracy in what he does. And so even though, you know, Pittman, week one, he saw eight targets, caught four of them. Like, some of those footballs that he's getting are not catching. Yeah, up. I would like to see Pittman get some shots downfield. and doesn't look like that's his role at all, Yeah, unfortunately. I, I think one week. It's hard to judge that for sure. I do know that I don't expect Derek Carr to be wildly accurate. These are these are the I mean, decisions we have to make after one week, though, with these traded. Players. I'm just saying, like if a, like a risk gets a lot of shade for his arm, I just feel like Derek Carr's in the world beaters. Yeah. Anyway, my my point is like we just went through a lot of receivers that I think were all drafted similarly, and we chose a lot of them over Lave. So that's why if if I'm taking those over Lave and you can make those moves, I'm probably just doing it. I'm probably making the move there. Part of the question for me with this is also subjective to like what you think. I, I think people are far more panicked on Alave than that. I think so too. And Maybe. I think that's why I'm yeah. saying buy. Well, that's yeah. why. Yeah, I said hold and then sell after like a big game. Everyone's like, okay, this is the Alave we wanted. Because <laughs> because like, I, I think if it's in, if we get to the conversation of the next round, which or like later in that round is DK T Higgins, Mike Evans. Alave I'm probably having Alave over all those guys. Not Evans. Probably not Evans. Well, I don't really. Know. Yeah, I, I think Evans to me. No, I, to me, that's Evans I would, easily. I would, I would still lean Evans over Olave, but yeah. 
the usage of Godwin and possibly like this offense not being that efficient every single week for Evans to get two touchdowns, I think his ceiling might be a little lower than I expected. But yes. I still would take him over a lot. I guess. Yeah. Does McMillan get involved a little bit more as the year goes on? Maybe. <clears throat> but like I don't know. DK, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, like basically there's everyone after that. I'm taking Alave over. So, so if, if, if we're to that I level of panic, those guys were getting drafted pretty like shortly behind so Alave. Though. Here's what I'll say: at that ADP of which you drafted him, that range of wide receivers, I. Tend to be a little bit more whole. Olave wasn't wasn't even a full round ahead of some of those guys. What, what picks were they? Five, uh, five, eight, five, seven, five, nine. Where was he? Four ten. You just said okay. four ten. Yeah, that was like eleven picks. Yeah, I feel like that that those are different tiers though. Yeah. Well, but I'm saying he, Chris Olave is not currently in the old tier. He's not currently in the in, old in tier. his old tier. He's definitely not viewed in his old tier. Yeah. That's why I'm saying I think he could be a buy for me. Okay. Yeah. So so in that second down tier where we think he's a buy low at the moment, I'm buying him. But if he's being valued in that tier where he was drafted, he's a hold for me. That that that's a good way to bridge the gap. If he's and all those guys that you mentioned, if he's viewed there, I would take. We said we'll take those guys one for one ahead. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. All right. Let's let's talk about another player that's kind of on the uh, on the downturn here. We Coop. have Amari Cooper. Gosh, only got three plays into it. Tough scene for our guy Adam here. She thought we was leaving. I know what I'm doing. I don't feel good about it, but I'm, I know what I'm doing. You should know what I'm doing. My marker's doing. absolutely cooked. You want it's another one? cooked as Coop? No. Disagree with that. I'm holding. Oh, no. Why are you holding? Tell us why you're holding. He's buying, We're buying. You're buying. Look, I think for me, I really fear what this offense is going to be this year. That is the biggest reason why I'm just not willing to buy into Amari Cooper. Obviously, the targets were there. He had nine targets last week. Uh, he dropped the touchdown, as you mentioned, Adam, on an earlier episode, but... That being said, this offense looked bad. Yep. Like, borderline one of the worst offenses in football last year. Not borderline. And, and I don't think anybody will debate that. Yep. I don't think he is going to be valued that highly. And even then, I, I'm not willing to buy into bad offenses like that after a poor f- uh, performance in week two or week one there for Amari Cooper. So, I, I think for me, it's just avoiding the risk, not necessarily fading the player, just avoiding the risk of the offense as a whole. Yeah. I mean, what Cleveland is loses 37, 33 17. Cooper has nine targets, two catches, 16 yards. What is the risk, though? I guess is my question. I feel like at this point, Amari Cooper doesn't have any risk. Like, I, well, I, feel uh, like I, I think this is, I, I kind of think this is an overreaction to what the Cleveland offense is. You think they, so? I think Watson's bad. I think he's definitely bad, but. I don't think they're 3.8 yards per attempt. Get your shit stomped by three touchdowns bad most of the time. And with Njoku out now for probably like a month of the season, Cooper already seeing nine targets. Yeah, I think much better days are ahead for both just the offense as a whole and Cooper. I just, I personally feel like this offense is better when they focus on the run game. They try and get that going. Jerome Ford is going to be more involved. Like that's how this offense is going to have to get going. And yeah. It may not always be nine, ten targets for Cooper. We also know, you know, Judy's there. Obviously, you said Njoku is uh, going to miss some time here. But I just don't really – I think for me right now, other than Jerome Ford, I don't really want to invest in anybody on this team at all. I don't I don't, yeah. I don't other than Cooper. I will, I will tell you uh, – I'm glad you brought that up because I would have forgot to talk about this. They did not have both of their tackles. Like, True that. They missed both they, their tackles. Both yeah. of their tackles being out does not allow them theme, to push – they they have I feel like a, they've been out since last year. Where they they have a lot of inconsistency <laughs> with everything in Cleveland, but yeah. the offensive line has had a lot of times where it's been absolutely great, but then they're banged up and the, it goes to shit. Quick. Yeah, but but genuinely, like they, that was the case last year too. Are these guys these guys are coming back from major? Like, are they when are they getting back? Like, are they ever getting back? There was question if they would play week one, so they're supposed to be ready to go week two or week three. For Cle- okay. The way the Cleveland works is they probably won't play this season. But correct. That's that's like my thing is like okay, we were missing our tackles last year in week one. It's like. When the fuck they, are they the crazy back? part is they were not playing with either of their tackles late in the year last year, too. Yeah, I remember. So, uh, but, but I, I'm just saying that when you don't have Wills and you don't have uh, the, both tackles, man, you, you can't get enough push, especially versus Dallas. Holy to run. shit. Don't look at that. Guess how many QB hits That's Dallas what, as a team had. I, Kevin Stefanski's only thing he talked about Watson was he can't get hit like that. I'm going to guess 12? Nah. More? 15. 17. I was going to guess at least seven. Most teams are at like seven or eight. If you get close to 10, it's bad. Got hit 17 times. Damn. Oh, my goodness. One for each case. Yeah. (laughs) 
Dude, that's actually crazy. 17 hits, it might be the most in the NFL. That, oh, in week one. I mean, across, the, if you look at all the weeks in a single week, that might be up there. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. actually insane. It's why I say I think better days are ahead. There was, he had never had a chance in this game. But if, if you just think about it from that standpoint, and I know in Cleveland, it's very easy to look at things optimistically. It's all we do. But <laughs> this was as bad as it's going to probably look. Like they had no both offensive linemen out. Now, without Njoku, the offense will be worse, but I think Amari Cooper is going to be funneled targets. I think if people are super panicked, that he could be had pretty dirt cheap. Yeah. Do you worry at all that it's going to take maybe a little while to learn this new Ken Dorsey offense instead of the Alex Van Pell offense? No, nah, because you know no. who's calling the plays? Stefanski. Uh-huh. Fair enough. Stefanski don't let nobody do shit. Yeah. You know, I, so I got history. How it's turning out now. I got history with Stefanski. What you gonna do, about Vikings it? OC for a while? All right, well, bye, Cooper. Under Zimmer. <clears throat> Let's talk about All right. Pittman. Next up, we got Michael Pittman Jr. Currently the wide receiver nineteen. Dude, I just Mark Cooper's wide receiver thirty two, fellas. That's why I say I think he's that a makes buy. sense. But I think that's why he's a buy. Yeah. Like you get down to that territory, there's no one that's yeah. That's you, Nikki. What sorry, are we doing here? I'm sorry, Michael. Straight buying. Okay. Damn, we have like three different things here. We have four. What do you got? I got. I, have, I got hold. Okay. I got. I have I'll, buy. I'll, I'll take the sell part then. All right. Okay. At wide receiver nineteen, I mean that's that's a pretty sturdy price, and I think I like the targets that we saw. One of the things that I like really wanted to see coming into this year because Pittman was a good downfield receiver in college. Yes. They have not used him that way at all since cover since coming into the NFL, and I was hopeful that with a rich's arm they would start to pair that skill set of Pittman's with it, and it doesn't look like that's going to be the case whatsoever. Alec Pierce has that role. A.D. Mitchell has that role. And both Ash, of them... Ashton Doolin. Ashton Doolin is fucking catching <laughs> yappers down the field. Michael Pittman's doing everything but that. So if Pittman continues to just be like a 5 for 55 guy, and I'm sure he'll have games of like 8 for 90, whatever, great in PPR, but if he's not getting any of those downfield targets and they have such a good like group of dudes that could catch the ball downfield... I'm worried about that. I will say, I guess, now thinking a little bit more of it, the one piece that could change that quickly, obviously, is Josh Downs coming back in, playing the slot more, moving Pittman to the outside. I just feel like they have a very defined role for when they're taking downfield shots, and it's always to, like, Pierce or Adonai. Yeah. So, with Pittman, I just, like, God, I wish they – if they gave him more downfield shots, I would be so in on him. Yeah, I yeah, mean. I'll take the buy argument. I was actually going to – Bring in the conversation of Josh Downs. It sounds like he's not too far away from potentially he's practicing playing. this week. This feels like they're going to give him another week another of rest, one. and then like maybe week three he plays. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. I, I don't necessarily feel like the Colts offense that we saw in week one is the game plan. Obviously, that's not the personnel that we expected them to go out the season with, anyways. I think everything with Michael Pittman, the reason why you would buy into him, wide receiver nineteen isn't crazy expensive. I don't think it's actually you know a, a pretty fair price for what he has done statistically over the last couple of seasons. He's going to give you these games. This has kind of been the Michael Pittman experiment where you'll get these games where he gets four or five catches on eight, nine targets, and it's not a lot of, you know, not a lot of yardage, not a touchdown. But then he's going to give you those games where he does do that for 80 yards and a touchdown, and it's on six catches. It's going to be a little bit inconsistent. At the end of the year, you're going to be looking at a guy who's performing as a low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two for your fantasy team. And I think at wide receiver 19 cost, you ride the ups and downs. It's a little bit of a roller coaster. And that's kind of going to be the experience, I think, with Anthony Richardson uh, under center here. It's it's just going to be a roller coaster experience for, I think, everybody. Nine completions is crazy. Nine completions is crazy. I was just looking at the I was, I was just going to say. The yards per reception. Look at the receivers. <laughs> yeah. Alec Pierce averaging 41.7 yards per reception. Ashton Doolin, 54 yards per reception. Michael Pittman, 7.8. But ultimately, the usage, I think, is what I'm buying into. He's gonna, he's, there's no question at all that Michael Pittman is the number one alpha in this offense. That, that's, I'm glad you went. I was, that was going to be my main thing is, like, do you guys know that Anthony Richardson completed nine passes last week? And I just th- I think about this, okay? Also, very crazy, just I want to mention this, very crazy how highly Anthony Richardson finished in the quarterback rankings this week with nine completions. But that's, but that's, but that's what makes him – a cheat code. Unique. Also, one thing to throw in there as well is because Joe Mixon played so fucking well, look at the time of possession on the bottom left. No, they, they 40 just, minutes for the Texans, 20 for Indy. That, <laughs> you never see skews like that. I was going to say, I watched this entire game. It was actually electric. I was kind of really upset that Avery didn't get a chance at the end. If Nico, that catch was outrageous on the sideline. Yeah. If, 
if the Colts get the ball back, it would have been an awesome ending. Yeah. But, guys, Anthony Richardson completed nine passes. I'm about to change my shit. You know what? <laughs> I'm about to change my shit. Changing my shit. We're buying everybody. I'm, I'm buying every and anything. No, I'm, I'm going to buy because God, they had the ball hardly at all. He had nine completions. Michael Pittman, during that time, had eight targets. Yeah. He had all that All that shows me. I remember vividly eight last. targets on 19 attempts is pretty, pretty good. Pretty meaty. What's now, that target share? Math, but wow. you ask it thirty seven and a half. You ask him, yeah, that's pretty damn high. You asking him to do a lot of math today. That's, that's pretty damn high. Eight out of Nineteen. What the hell? But think, of, I think about this last that game this week was he only had one game last year, which was worse than that in his entire year. All those long completions. A Rich threw the ball very. He's going to be sporadic, but man, some of those throws are outrageous. I remember vividly last year when Michael Pittman gave us the cheetah as he got a fucking long ass touchdown running into the end zone. And all I see here is he could throw that bitch to anybody. Yeah. Ashton Doolin went to Malone College, D3, right by my house. Go. Dude, like. Light flex. No, that's fair. I'm, I'm way more on hold than I am actually sell. I, I'm not going to lie. That football, because I watched it in the live The first time. one, the Pierce? Brother. Crazy. Yeah, we were watching it here. It was like. Brother. It happened, and my eyes went, you what the fuck just for, happened? For as much shade as he will get for his whole career for not being a good, a good passer, that's one of the best passes you'll ever see. I'll tell Genuinely. you, there is maybe, he is maybe one of three guys in the league that can make that pass. I don't even know if the other dude, because he was like on the move-ish Bro, when he made he that He slipped before too. he got, yeah. who are the two? Allen and Mahomes, maybe. Yeah. Mahomes, I was going to say. Yeah. I don't know if Allen can, he might be Allen able to. can. Allen can do that, probably. Can do that. I thought you were going to bring up Herbert. I was like, I feel like Herbert's no. not mobile enough in the pocket to like make Allen, that. Allen and Mahomes are yeah. the only two that can make that throw. For sure. So, Kay. yeah, I mean, Richardson... It's just I'm just like fiending to see more out of him, you know. I, like I just want to keep seeing him play. The crazy part, the one better. thing I'm I'm sticking to is a small sample size. But in the games that they, he's played with a Rich, he's actually been out targeted in the games that he had with Minshew. Let me say that again. The games that a Rich has played with Pittman, he's had more. He was out targeted. He got more targets than he did in all his time with Minshew. Most people don't think that, but that's that's how the, crazy it is. The summary there: a Rich feeds Pittman. Correct. Feed the beast. All right, let's move on to number five here. We've got Brandon Ayuk, the San Francisco 49ers wide receiver in week one. They stomped on the New York Jets. Now, this was his first game back pretty much from missing most of training camp. Ayuk went two for 28 on five targets. He obviously dropped a touchdown Touchdown. pass that went through his hands. Would have been a nice, you know, maybe three for 50 and a touchdown get day, but still not an overly. Yeah, Peyton Manning uh, on the Manning cast was giving him a lot of shit for that drop. Really? I mean, yeah. it did hit him it straight was, in his fucking... Yeah. It was about as bad. He said, good. that's why you show up to practice. That's a dub, dub statement. Yeah. Uh, for me... Oh, are you guys ready? Um, Born ready. Nick's thinking. <laughs> Does this change your opinion? Don't look at my holding? board. <laughs> nah, it was more so like... <laughs> cheating out here. It kind of feels like everyone's just like a hold with a with a, with a a push towards another uh, angle. To be, to be fair, well, I, I now have bought every player until, to the, until this one. Yeah. I did try to hold. And I, I think this okay. is a true... I mean, we... Come this, on. Yeah, this is a true... It's like, a hold. Like, this is a true sell. This is <laughs> w. <laughs> nah. We need a, we nah, nah, real, no, no, no. We're all going to hold no, him here. There's nothing else you can do with him. Look, You're not buying him for some... He's not crazy cheap because of last week. Right. Also, the expectation was... Not very high last week. If I'm not mistaken, it came out later that he was going to be limited. Like, he was on a snap count, wasn't necessarily playing a full game. Like Snap count, not conditioned, and going against Sauce Gardner most of the game. Dude, like, fuck out of like, here. Come yeah. on. Let, I mean, he's going to have good weeks. Obviously, it, nothing has really changed. They paid him to be a number one guy here. It's yeah. There's not a lot to really overthink. He's... Really, just a hold. These, yeah, the he's good just games a hold. Brock come. Purdy attempted 29 passes because all they wanted to do was run, and it worked so fucking well. And maybe that's the game plan for a lot of it going forward. But, like, we know what Ayuki is. He's an elite separator in an offense that's going to have a ton of scoring opportunities. So, just, like, not something to overthink. Also, like, a heavy run game offensive scheme is not new to a Shanahan offense. This is what it's been yeah. for Ayuk. The, the, the thing about him is, like, uh, I do think for this season, without injuries to Kittle or to – uh, Debo, it's going to be a lot of the same. He's going to have some weeks where he has a good ceiling, but he's he's going to be pretty stable for the let's, most part. Right? Let's, he's wide receiver 13 right now. Okay. That's right. a pretty hefty price. I'd say that feels right, though. Okay. Let me ask you. Would you take Ayuk or Rashi Rice rest of the season? I think it's a good conversation. I'd, Rashi. Probably, I'd probably lean Rashi, but I don't know that that's actually correct. 
I was like that Rashi. could be a little overreactionary in one week. Yeah, if I own Brandon Ayuk and someone put Rashi Rice in my inbox, I think I'm probably accepting that. I think I am too. Yeah. Um, I'm 60 only, I'm 60 40 Rashi Rice right now. Only because I think that Rashi is going to see much more volume than sure. Ayuk. I mean, I'm just going off who's going to get more fantasy points. Yeah. Well, that's going to contribute to fantasy points. Yeah, because right? you're saying well, like only if Ayuk if Ayuk if Ayuk was valued only have on more his, fantasy points. If he was only valued <laughs> on his targets, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which Niner wide receiver? Debo, I'm assuming, over Ayuk. I like but Ayuk more than Debo. I got him literally one spot different, but but I do prefer Debo. I would take Debo as well. I think there. I I like Ayuk more. How many more targets do you think he's going to get than Ayuk? Actually, I'm kind of curious now. Who Debo is going to get more Rashi, than Ayuk? No, Rashi. Oh. Shit, dude. I mean, based off of last week, I would not be shocked if we're looking at Rashi as like 135 targets this Probably year, that, like dude. 140 targets. I think this he's going to catch let, 100 passes. Let, let's say 130. Wow. That was I did, I put a bold prediction video out like the day before the season started, and like number two or three was Rashi catches 100. What did he catch in the first game? Eight? Seven. Seven? He got what? Ten targets? Nine he targets? He got nine targets. Yeah. It, I mean, I played 55% of snaps and got five. I mean. Yeah. Sure. I'm just saying, I don't think it's, I don't think the discrepancy is yeah. gonna be crazy. No, I mean, I think we could be looking at uh, it could be 115 to 135. I think is reasonable. I was gonna say 20, 30 targets potentially. That's with the efficiency of that Frisco offense. That don't mean nothing. Fair. I mean, I you had yeah, 20, 30 targets is a lot. I mean, you say the efficiency of that offense, but it's that's, like, uh, that's it comparing it to the Kansas City offense, though. Yeah. Sure, but it's not like, like we're comparing it to the Browns. Also, right. I guess but it Rashi would had a great your, game. Your if Ayuk had a great game, what are we going to be doing? I, I guess it would also you, depend you on the scoring, hurt right? With the Browns offense, we suck, but we nice. It would depend on scoring too, right? Like if you're in a full PPR, obviously you want the extra targets. If you're not, I, you know, I, maybe you I got I I got Rashi just a hair ahead of uh, you, but I get it. Fair enough. Anyways, right. talk about another Kansas City wide receiver, Xavier Worthy. Now keep in mind. His price is wide receiver thirty eight right now. Okay. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. Don't be honest with me. I'm, I hate when you're honest with me. I well, honesty hurts sometimes, and that's what I'm doing right now. Thirty eight does not feel like that's how your league is gonna view him right now. We we going to the dark side. I'm hold, I'm going Nick. Hold sell. I'm hold sell. <laughs> I'm, I'm hold sell. sell. Wait, did you actually again? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm sell. <laughs> I'm hold sell. Yeah, I mean we all are. Even at this at this price, I think the narrative is really strong. Like everyone knows like. Big plays, super limited role. Guy had two catches when his biggest probably target competition on the outside. Hollywood wasn't even playing. Got the breakaway speed, though. Obviously, that is a threat at any given moment. But the chances of end arounds going for touchdowns are like a 1 in 30 most of the time. right? Like If you're getting 20, 30 carries as a receiver, you're probably not taking those to the crib. He might score on every touch he gets from You now. actually might, though. That's like the one thing that worries me. Yeah, if he does, he'd probably be pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, listen, he's attached to Mahomes, so he's got the arm, can make that play any given any given throw. Uh, you know, we have to see what this offense really looks like when Hollywood Brown is in the mix there, and that's what kind of scares you for Worthy. You just with Worthy, it, it feels just like every touch is some sort of gadget touch. It's some end around, it's some screen, it's some deep shot. There's never like yeah. like he'll never have the Rashi Rice role, which I feel like is so much more valuable. Right. Well, th- to that point, so I'm I'm gonna give you a wild question here. I was thinking about this. Uh, in general, I think it's a pretty polarizing discussion. And I'm watching the game, and after the game's over, you got Mahomes and Worthy up there, like, you know, players of the game. I genuinely, and, and you tell me what you think, I can't think of players of the game that get up there that aren't either return specialists or defensive players that get three touches and are up there. Yeah. Like, ever. Like, that's, that's like a Devin Hester type thing, Desmond Howard type thing. Like, you're getting real big brain with that's. This. Talking about post game interviews. I'm trying to figure Bro, out where we're going here. No, but, I'm, but my point is, is this volume going to change? Everybody still thinks Kelsey's uh, Kelsey's going to be great. R- Rashi Rice, you're saying, not that you're alone, is that he's like a top 10, 12 receiver the rest of the way. Like how? how I know it's a great offense, but how can they all be true? You yep. can't. I don't think. I that is. I agree with you in that statement. I I think the game that we got out of Kelsey is not going to be the norm. Nor if it is, you know, nobody's going to be happy about it. But that being said, like, the big conversation point, and Nick, you've already touched on it enough that I don't feel like we really need to go too much, but the efficiency in the touchdowns, that was what made the day big. And I think a lot of the people, because of the things considered, it is the Kansas City Chiefs. It is Patrick Mahomes. It is a rookie. It is a guy who set, you know, a combine record for the most speed. Like, these things are going to blow the, the hype out of proportion. Sto- it was the perfect storm of things that just happened. At it once. is. And, and because of that, and I know I kind of said, like, 
yeah, he's number 38 on this, but I promise you, people in your league are, are going to be higher than 38. Yeah, and because agreed. of that, that's why he is a sell. He's I, a sell. I also think, like, maybe you can continue maybe waiting if Hollywood misses another week. Like, Cincinnati's a good defense to attack. Like, he could have another good game. Yeah. Atlanta, Charger, New Orleans, then they get their bye. Last three games of the season for KC is uh, at Cleveland, Houston, and at Pittsburgh. So you have a tough fantasy that's playoff tough. schedule where it's like, are you getting to that point and you and you're you know you're thinking about like oh I want worthy in my lineup I want worthy on my team maybe not. Let me ask you guys this because I saw he was pretty close in the ranking. Tank Dell or Xavier Worthy rest of season. Tank Dell. That's tank for me. Yeah, like, they're very close in rankings right here. Yeah, mm. I mean th- this is the thing about it with Worthy to me. Re- like from a fantasy standpoint, realistically, I feel like you have to almost you'd have to be someone that gets almost non attached emotionally you think about setting lineups right gabe davis was this way it was like incredibly frustrating what are you going to play him or not this week because he had a huge week last week and now he's two weeks off with worthy you almost have to just literally press auto start in your flex so that you don't miss the week because i feel like if he gets three or four touches every week yeah. he's going to give you a lot of duds yeah but then you're going to be thinking oh i shouldn't play him and then he's going to hit you with one of these 30 burgers and it's going to be incredibly frustrating. So if you don't think you can do that, I feel like I would be moving him. Yeah. yeah. I would also like to say that the rankings here are calculated via, like it's it's not a personal rankings, it's not the website rankings or anyone behind the scenes is rankings. It's literally based on trades that are pulled in and they have an algorithm running based on like, these like are actually values. how people are valuing them based on like the trades that are happening in real leagues. One for one inbox trade right now. You Would you, ha- would you take Kirk or Worthy? I think I'm going to take Xavier Worthy there. That's Super close. I think I would still take Kirk. I, Kirk's one I don't really want to overreact He's to after week one. a little scary, I think. A little scary, for sure. I, I, I mentioned he had a terrible I don't want to talk too much about too, Christian Kirk. But yeah. I, Christian I, Kirk I, had one catch last week. I said week uh, last, last week, I, I felt like they have now added just one too many mouths to feed, and it feels like that's kind of the... Which, which, is, which is a good segue to Brian Thomas or Xavier Worthy. I like BTJ. I would take BTJ, I think, as well. <laughs> Agreed. So All right. those are the two that are, right, that are closest to him. So, so we've got a... We got some haymakers on, on coming up here on the list. Next, we have Jamar Chase, number four on this list. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Chase is a tough one. <laughs> oh, my gosh, is the only right reaction here. This is the AFC North in me. Oof. It's not fun. <laughs> I saw the slash. I have a slash, too. I did a sell slash buy. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Ready? Yeah, we're all hold buy or buy. I hold just buy. got singular buy. Probably don't need to overthink this. I, I don't think. I guess uh, – you know, the main narrative is like, all right, Cincinnati's struggling. Joe Burrow's wrist is fucked up. Uh, they never play well in the beginning of the season. Is there anything that we haven't heard that makes you feel either worse about Cincy or better about Cincy that they're going to pull their shit together? Is there any narrative that hasn't been, like, talked about? Over no, I mean, I'll just – it's simple. It's very simple for me. Buy elite players, especially if they're at a discount. I think yeah. there's a chance that Chase is at a discount here. To me, he's just too talented to even if – Burrow's wrist is messed up. They go to a backup quarterback to where we should panic on him. And the other thing is, based on everything that we saw going into it, God, it's like not literally reporting to camp or not reporting to fucking practice. AI really not style. in game shape, and he's out hey, there week He's one. literally Allen yeah. Iverson. Like, he had six catches on six targets for 62 yards. It's not hey, like he was abysmal. Solid yeah. day. It'll, it'll get much better because you have, like, T. Higgins is out, so all of the attention is on – Jamar Chase and, you know, put Christian Gonzalez on him, put a bracket safety over him. It's like that day is going to be New tough. run game, no mixing back there. Like. Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot of moving parts that, like, they'll get it together like they always do within a month period. And like you said, Jamar Chase is he's due for a 50-burger at any given fucking week. Yep. He's the one on that list to me that, like, just really doesn't belong as far as uh, any panic, in my opinion. I, I, I'd agree with that. Let's move to C-Mac. A lot of people panicking about Mr. <sighs> C-Mac. And one of your idiot league mates. One of your idiot league mates. Drafted him and is enjoying. Can I just write? Can I just write idiot on the board? I'll show mine if you show yours. You know what, Oriol? You always want to see. You know what, You're on my own shimmer. I don't know. All right. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna hold. Okay. Well, I have him, and you can't sell him, so that doesn't work. Yeah. So that's that's kind of why I'm saying hold because I, here's the reality of it. You drafted CMC. Nobody who drafted him is actually going to sell him to you low. That's. I just don't think anybody's going to actually do that. Uh, if you can buy him cheap. There's a lot of risk with it, so I don't really know if I'm buying him cheap either. Yeah. That's like, my biggest issue. It's like when you know a player is injured, he's he's just I, – I don't ever really want to trade for an injured player in the same way I don't want to draft an injured player going into the season. C-Mac owners got fucked just straight up. Like we thought he was fine. The like calf injury, 
six weeks ago, he'll be fine. He's practicing. He's good to go. And then all of a sudden, he's inactive. Now the vibes at a San Fran are fucking weird. Jordan Mason knew it was starting Friday. You know what Friday. I was reminded of this year? And there, I wish I had the stat that I could actually pull out. But the reality is when you draft players that struggle with injury in the preseason and early in the – or I guess later in the summer, like most of the time those players do not live up to the ADP expectations. Right. And I was reminded of that very quickly this season – Puka Nakua, Christian McCaffrey. We don't like, draft injured players. We just shouldn't be doing that. Yes, we do. And, and that is yeah, something we, that we should yeah. note. Clip this, save it. Next year before your drafts, do not draft players who have had injuries in the preseason going into the late It just summer. dawned on me that Tony knew a lot before the draft. He knew how to get the number one pick. He knew Christian McCaffrey was going to be hurt. He might have inside scoop over in Frisco. That's why he's the commission. He so, might be crooked. That's what I think. I, he's, no, I, he's definitely I, corrupt. I honestly crooked. respect it, though. I yeah. do. Uh, Th- with C-Mac, yeah, like here's the thing. We're all kind of in wait and see mode. We're pretty sure he's out for week two. If you're already pretty much ruled out or doubtful for week two, that makes me wonder about week three. That makes me wonder going forward. Like, listen, I, would I be surprised if he played in week three? No. Would I be surprised if we didn't see him until like week four or five based on the vibes out there? Also, maybe no. If yeah. San Francisco keeps winning games and Jordan Mason looks fine, and they know that this is a team that wants to win a Super Bowl, and the best way to do that is to make sure that Christian McCaffrey is on the football field in February. That is probably what your plan would be. Just let CMC rest yeah. the, and get to the playoffs. The, yeah. truth, the, the truth is they've, they've won a ton of games without them. They don't even necessarily need right. them. I mean, that's how good that fucking system is. Like, C-Mac's great, and it elevates them, but, like, anyone can get in there and go for a buck fifty. There have already been conversations, too, uh, from Shanahan about – them wanting to lighten the workload for CMC this year. And so if we're dealing with this injury already, maybe he even does show up week three. Maybe he does show up week four. Does Jordan Mason force a split now? Yes. I, I don't. I wouldn't call it a true split, but that's why in my ranks I had him at 13. Is Because okay. I do think if he plays, he's not getting the 28 locked in touches. He Next did, four weeks, have. you got Minnesota, L.A., and you got New England and Arizona, where it's like you don't need C-Mac for that. I don't think I, – I really don't think NFL teams – operate the way that we think about it that Correct. way. They're like, oh, we don't need players for this because we're going to win. Because they want their best player on the field every day. Yeah, I think with C-Mac, okay, so let, let's let's talk about some actionable shit. Like I, I said, like sell or whatever if I have them. Like you're obviously not going to be able to flip them one for one for like Brees at this whole, at this point, no. right? Like they were going back to back and like you're not going to be able to do that. Brees, Bijan, probably what about what about uh, like What about like a Jameer Gibbs? Are you flipping C-Mac for a Jameer Gibbs right now? I think you should be. If, if like you have C-Mac <laughs> in our league, if – uh. If JMO offered you Jameer Gibbs for C Mac, are you hitting accept on that? I would to I league? would accept that in every league except for your eight elite mates. Why? Because in that league, he's it, I'm I'm going to going lean into I'm either gonna I'm leaning into in that league because of the prize pot and because of the stakes, like win or go home completely miserable. Like what, I, it, it's almost more I'm leaning more into the risk uh to a higher degree than I would in any other league, I basically. What he's saying. not saying is he wants to be last place so he can be in the content <laughs> for the punishment. Go. You don't need yeah. I don't need to get last place to eat a shit ton of food, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we're switching the punishment by the way. That's what are we doing? To a stand up stand up set. Oh lot We're just switching Punishment mid season, yeah, and we could, Fine, we, could we might switch it again. Don't worry so. about us. We're we're the winner circle out yeah. here. Yeah. Now, about us. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't, I won for the record. I am one and zero in my division, and everyone else is zero and one. All right, so but yeah, it must be nice. My division's a powerhouse. Yeah, I drafted perfectly. The, the thing about it is, though, I think I think realistically, the, the San Fran, the way that they're handling the situation to me is kind of odd, just from the what they're putting out publicly. Because if we knew that Chris McCaffrey was more significantly hurt than he has been led on to believe. To me, these narratives would have been correcting themselves. Like, Chris McCaffrey's been hurt before. We've seen this coming. Now it's like everybody got hit last minute with it. Right. I, I just feel like it's it's very concerning that it was a calf strain, and then it was calf slash Achilles, and now it's Achilles tendonitis is right. what, what they're saying. Yeah. Like, it's developing more and more into this if, worse If we injury. knew this, like if they ruled him out for week one early – before, like, the week one week started, his ADP in drafts would, would likely have been, like, end of round two. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying is that the fall would have been real. And, and like, let's say we knew he's probably not going to play until at least week three. Like, if that was the sediment, right, that's what they're telling the, the public. The public's fading, man. Because we've all seen Chris McCaffrey be hurt. It's just been several years now. Yep. Okay. So, I would agree with you that if you can get C-Mac off the team right now because – Here's the thing. Even if he does play, like, when you have that calf strain, you're still at a very elevated re-injury risk for the next very high six risk. weeks or so. Um, yeah, I would move him off my team for Gibbs if someone offered me that. I would move him JT. off for JT if, he, if someone offered me that. A-Chan, 
uh, probably anyone that's like relatively high ranked. Pacheco. Pacheco. I would not do that one. I, I think that may be where the tear breaks for me. Somebody well. throws you a little, you know, a little flex wide receiver in on top. You you definitely making that move? None of this cherry on top plus shit. No, we're talking just one for once. You're not going to cherry on top for a uh, get off of CMC right what now? What about Pacheco and uh, Tank Dell? Hell yeah. Maybe. I'm out. Out of C-Mac. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe, I'm doing the same maybe thing. Maybe it would be. But, like, the, that's, that's one where just the, the pluses in a shallow redraft lineup to me don't really mean as much because – what CMC is, even if it, even if it gave you eight weeks, let's say, is just you yeah. can't replicate that. No, that's fair. What you can replicate is Terry McLaurin's performance every single week. Is that man <sighs> highly, doing it. highly He's replicated? He's the number two most rated player, and we we talked about him a little bit, but he is the wide receiver thirty seven right now. Man, it's been such a such a sad career now. All right, Nikki, we're getting bitter. We, get down. Sell, 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 yeah, old sell, sell his ass. Ohio can never have anything nice. I, I just I'll jump in first and I'll kind of reiterate what I said on the wide receiver rankings for this week. There is not a single player in fantasy football that I am more panicked about and more worried about than Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin's usage was not ideal. This offense, it does not look that great with Cliff Kingsbury and Jaden Daniels is going to run the football a lot this season. Um, Unfortunately, you know, this has been the story of Terry McLaurin's career. It doesn't look like at least off of week one and it may be an overreaction by me, but it doesn't look like that is going to change here in 2024, and I just I don't want to be in on this Washington Commanders Terry McLaurin experience. I'm done. I'm out. Yeah, this is just like this is the Cliff Kingsbury experience, and I wish I had like that was how I felt the whole summer, but I still was buying into Terry despite that, and it killed because he's me. different, right? Like, and he is, but this is you can't overcome this. Yeah, trying not to overreact to it, but it's just nothing about it from the passing standpoint is encouraging, and I just don't even feel like he's the deep target. I feel like they would like prefer to use Deami Brown or Alameda Zacchaeus downfield and just use Terry around the line of scrimmage, and it's just... That's if they ever throw downfield. They so didn't bad. throw downfield in week one. Yeah. I, I just they feel did like... a lot in the preseason, so I assumed it was going to happen, but... I, I just feel like it, it also can't be understated that this team trailed the whole game, got beat by three scores. Yep. So it's not like, you know, oh, they w- were in this positive game script, so naturally then... Terry's only going to get four targets. It's nope. this team got clapped. It's he also had four tar- he, he, he almost had the same targets as Alameda Zacchaeus. And, for and we group. can't even sit here and say like this, you know, you, we use the excuse for DK like he was covered by Sertan. That can't be said in this game. Like he, it's not that tough of a defense. You're, you're trailing the whole game and you have 30 rush attempts to 24 pass attempts, which obviously those are not all design rushes. Jane Daniels has 16 rush attempts. A lot of those are scrambling out of the pocket. But that's what you're getting with Jaden Daniels where, you know, if you're calling 35 pass plays, guess what? You're only getting off 27 pass plays because Daniels is taking off. And he had 24 attempts, and it's like – that's the, the other thing is Jaden – a young a young quarterback in general is going to get a little more uh, cappy feet when there's – the NFL people are chasing him down, right? Like – You were just kind of hoping that Terry would be like, okay, I feel unsafe. Terry's my guy. I feel safe. Yeah, that's my 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 security blanket over there. I'm not. There's no way that's it because that's what that Austin security is. blanket is. Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, Zach Ertz. Like they're just checking down to the short yardage guys. <laughs> okay, let me just let me just for the people that are out there standing. What is the tier that you would put McLaurin into right now? <sighs> the tier not great, not great. Like I what are like the, what are some a, players that you think are equal? Like I would okay, I would actually have like, Terry there. Like, Christian Watson maybe. Uh, I would say he's teetering around that Christian Kirk area. Christian Kirk, Christian I would take Watson. Kirk over him. I would take Kirk, I would take over, Christian him right Kirk, now. Kirk over him as well. Would you, but would you take Watson or McLaurin? Watson's kind of tough, I guess, because the Watson's love situation. Watson's tough because the Jordan Love situation. But if Jordan Love is on the football field, which we expect him to be back on the football field here not too long from now, I prefer Christian Watson. I think I would lean Watson, which I'm. Just, I guess the point is like, what's after that? Yeah, we're it's in, at that uh, basically a player that you don't want to play. We're, yeah. it, we got real scary. Like, are it's you bad. taking? Are you we're taking scared of scary, scary Terry? Yeah. Are wow. you taking a shot on like? Khalil Shakir? No, nah, I'll, I'll take Terry Over, there. like, McLaurin? I might consider it. Maybe. Th- that's another trick one, I guess, because I want to see, like, Curtis Samuel getting back into Keon it. But, Coleman, but I like, agree. You know, no, no, I agree you know that I mean? that's like, where we're getting to, and that's scary hours yeah. for sure. That's like, we don't know if we even want to play them every week. Yeah. Okay, so. Speaking of scary hours. I, I can, let me just put one more piece in there for Terry McLaurin, because I, I do want to, you know, give something a little bit more actionable. And the reality is, like, 
if you have Terry McLaurin, we're not obviously we all do not feel good about him right now, and we are all saying to sell him. We're not like panic selling Terry McLaurin. I think you know there is a world where you can argue that there is a hold situation here with Terry McLaurin. So like, don't go off and sell for for nothing if you are watching this. But at the end of the day, like this is a player where if he has a good game, look around your league. Try and find you know some of those managers that will buy into the name cachet of Terry McLaurin and try would, to get out. I of would him. flip Terry if we looked cross positional. I would look to see if you can get get like a Zach Moss. I think like Zach Moss is like so boring for people and they think about Cincinnati's offense. But if you could do a cross flip there, that's something I'm interested in. I, I'm I'm genuinely actually panic selling Terry McLaurin. Yeah, to be completely honest. like you're just at whatever like you I, can I, get I, type I, shit. I I think the best way I think you got, if you can package him together with something. Like kind of like when you feed Sneak the him in. feed the dog the the pill, right? You get it like put in some other food or try cross positionally. I I am panic selling honestly. Like not not I'm not just giving him away for free, but I'm literally going to explore trading him. McLaurin bad. or Tyler Lockett, same pitcher. I'll say for this week, if I had to make the sit start decision between the two, it's Lockett. It's Lockett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that means season long. I'm not answering that question. Because <laughs> it hurts your soul. Let's move to number one. It's Jordan Mason. And I want to frame this in a little bit of a different aspect. Okay. Let's think about how we just talked about selling Christian McCaffrey for the low. And that's a painful thing that you have to do. Yeah. What if we looked at this from the angle of like, buying you just him. are, I, no one, I don't think there's anyone out there that's just randomly buying Jordan Mason, right? You're probably buying him if you're the Christian McCaffrey owner. So let's look at this as if you are minimizing risk. So rather than having to sell off your Christian McCaffrey share, you are buying Jordan Mason for mm-hmm. a lower price. This, I, I, I want to, I if it's cool, I'll just, I want to say this. I think this, there's a massive conversational difference here in a dynasty league versus a redraft league as to why, and you'll see the player percentage traded right. is is monumentally different. Jordan Mason, in, in a long-term dynasty type league, I don't care. His dynasty value is never going to be worth what he probably is right now. Yeah. If you can get something real. In redraft, I don't care. He may ha- be a one-hit wonder. I don't care. I'm good with that. Like, I'm far more willing to buy, and even I, even if I don't have CMC, I mean, Jordan Mason. You would buy here. Jordan Mason right now if you don't own CMC. I definitely would. Now, obviously, the price is – everything's dependent on price. But, yes, because if, if I'm as panicked about CMC not playing as much as we just talked about, the beneficiary is clearly Jordan Mason. I, yeah. I also think people are buying, you know, let, let's just call it a raw Jordan Mason. Like, people are just buying him without having CMC on the roster. People are doing that. Like, yeah, I, that's I've had crazy a lot of questions. Me. I would never do that. I've had a lot really? of questions yeah. in my Discord as of the last couple of days about buying Jordan Mason. Like, what would you give for Jordan Mason? What should I sell Jordan Mason for? So, it's good that this is being, uh, you know, part of the conversation. It, how come? Do, are you guys ready to flip these? Or uh, how come? I just, kind of I just mean because if it goes bad, it goes it goes to zero yeah. with Jordan Mason. If C-Mac comes back next week, it goes to pretty much zero. Yeah, for me, I'm... I have him hold by. I'm okay, but I'm okay because, like, the in, insular value of having him along with C-Mac means that you have now shored up that spot. Actually, He's a super buy for me if I'm a C-Mac owner at this point. This is what you get for not fucking having your handcuff. And when people, like, buy other people's handcuffs... It is cool that you have Jordan Mason now, but if you're a C-Mac owner, this situation fucking hurts. I actually, I have an unpopular opinion here, and I don't think you're going to agree with me at all. Okay. Uh, but I, if I have CMC, I'm actually not buying Jordan Mason. Like, I don't want to have both of these guys on my roster now. And I know you said you kind of get to sure up that position, but now I feel like I'm wasting two roster spots on a sketchy situation in the first place. It doesn't place. feel wasted to me. I get that. I get that in best ball, I think. The, in redraft, I don't agree with the that. The problem is, if I'm worried about, here's, and it goes back to our conversation about Chris McCaffrey. If I'm that worried about Christian McCaffrey that I feel like I need to now go out and pay somebody to buy Jordan Mason from them, I'm better off just selling my Christian McCaffrey and not buying Jordan Mason to just add to this backfield. I'd rather just sell out and have a different backfield and have a different running back and not have to play that game of Jordan Mason and Christian McCaffrey for the majority of the year where we said there's a chance that they're just splitting backfield touches the rest of the way. Well, yeah. I So I I would say that I agree with that point by and large. I would say, though, that the whole reason I have roster spots on my bench is that I'm looking to when the opportunity is best, when that strike, I can strike. It is worth having two roster spots to have arguably a top five play every week at the position. So I think that's a more this is a more extreme version of it. But like to me. I don't know that even when Chris McCaffrey comes back, I think he'll have a limited ceiling, but I don't think it'll be like. Yeah, when I said split, I don't. I I think more like 65 35 at best. At best. best. Right, right. right. I think Jordan Mason will maybe have like six touches a game. That is going. That will definitely mean that CMC is not performing as the 101. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, but he was. This is a guy that like. 
when healthy is realistically in like that 80% range. So I just, it's down. It's just not crazy. I, down. I just think my take with Jordan Mason and CMC, they play hand in hand. If I'm worried about CMC, which I am worried about CMC, I'm selling him. You can buy Mason if you know you you want to, but the reality is, if I have CMC, I'm just selling him. I'm not buying into San Francisco's backfield. Maybe you can maybe you can get, you know, Jordan Mason cheap, and maybe the the high IQ play and maybe and you just flip Terry McLaurin for Jordan Mason. Maybe what you do is you just buy Jordan Mason and then you sell CMC, and then you have That's, Jordan Mason and you're you s- out of control right now. <laughs> but not, but not, you're out of control. If you can trade. Twice in dynasty in a regular redraft league, that'd be sick in general. I doubt that happens, but I actually think though to to my what I was just gonna say about the situation. If I can get Jordan Mason on any of my teams, I don't need to. I don't need to have Christian McCaffrey. I'm gonna know going into the week outside of last week. Let me ask you: Is this, he gonna play? Because I was gonna bring this up based on the rankings here. You were in this situation. You have C Mac. Yeah. You don't have Jordan Mason. Okay. You have Roma Dunze. Yep. Would you give up Rome to have Jordan Mason right now? Yes. That's that's a fair thing where I think that's the range where you're in the Rome, you're in the Terry McLaurin tier, you're in the, you know, guys like that where it's like, damn, I'd like to have this piece, but I'd like to have my fucking RB1 back here. My my flex play with down the road in the season upside, I you give up for I'm sacrificing right now. Right. Now, immediately to stay alive. Now that actually is why I had the hold in front of the buy because if you don't have CMC I am worried that there is a chance that I buy Jordan Mason, and two weeks from now, I have a guy that's not really that valuable. That's what but I'm saying. There's, I, all, there's all risk if you're buying yes. Jordan Mason without CMC. That, I think, is where I actually struggle with the point in redraft because I'm going to ask you a question that's kind of rhetorical, but what player doesn't have that in the range of outcomes in two weeks? They're just not valuable. Uh, I mean, this, but this is, like, so obvious why that would happen uh, yeah i would but say when you're buying someone like of course that could happen but like if you're buying him without any sort of like oh i know why this could lead to that then i feel like there's a that's a different it's discussion. not they're they're not valuable because of an injury which could happen to everybody but it's they're not valuable because they were backup mm-hmm. I, I get it but i'm saying jordan mason the payoff with him is different than almost anybody out there obviously yeah that's what the trade-off is though yeah the, the trade-off is yeah that this guy as long as he's playing, is going to be a really nice player. But literally, no one is subject to make it out of a l- next week alive. Yep. In the next week. Yep. Jordan Mason, you're playing the same weekly game, really. Fair. Yeah, no, that's fair. I think I just – I think in redraft especially – I mean, maybe – like, listen, if, you're, if your team is down and you got to, like, take risks to shoot for upside, I feel like a lot of the times I play redraft is more risk-averse, uh, which is why I lean towards, like, I'd rather have C-Mac and Jordan Mason than go for the upside play of, of that. I, 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 that makes sense. Strategically, I play more – yeah. The opposite way. I'll say this too. If it was, let's say this is Brees Hall last year, okay. I'm much less likely to buy Jordan Mason right now because Brees Hall to me is a young player that should not. Wait, I, so say that again? Like Brees Hall last year when he was coming in, he didn't play as much early in the year. Remember, he was coming off the injury. Sure. Or if, he's, if it's a young player that doesn't have a huge injury history, I'm less likely to buy Jordan Mason. Christian McCaffrey to me right now, even when he comes back, might be done for the season in a week. There's a lot less like certainty for me with him playing the rest of the year out. So, are you gonna go out and try to get Jordan Mason in our league? I yes, I will, but I doubt I will get him because it's just how my, I, my it's my idiot, my idiot league Jack mates. Does. Okay, Jack has, I think Jack, well, he needs help. Also, you want to know what Jack told me earlier today, and I don't even. I think he was trying to be. I don't know what uh, he's you know. Like. I think he was joking, but I don't think he was joking too. You know, when you can tell there's a little yeah. seriousness. He said Jordan Mason, the number one running back in the NFL. Okay, that's just it doesn't. Well, yeah, we ain't doing that. You know, I'm just saying your your cost to buy Jordan Mason might be. That's why I'm saying. If it. you could convince that's him, you're giving him a league long term piece. Uh, he will give it up. That's why I said so? it's uh, my idiot league mates. I doubt I get it, I, I but just, I'll try. Look, I, I'll tell I you. I think you should go to Jack and say, "Listen, I'm trying to buy Jordan Mason. Who on my team is like?" Good enough, you think long term with some upside within reason that you would do a one for one swap yeah. right now. I was I able to grab Jordan Mason there. off of waivers in one of my leagues, and my the way I'm operating with Jordan Mason right now, I don't have Christian McCaffrey. I just got Jordan Mason off of waivers. I'm operating as if this was a piece that I was able to grab. It's an addition to my roster. I'm not going to sell Jordan Mason at this right. point. I'm just going to ride the hot hand and see what I get. If it goes to zero eventually, fuck it. I got it off the waiver wire. I, like, if if I have I Jordan Mason. I'm not selling him, despite what yes. I'm saying. Like, I am, if I'm a C-Mac owner, I'm actively looking to buy. That doesn't mean on the flip side, I'm going to enjoy these next two, like, 25-point weeks yeah. and call it a day if I need to. Does that make sense, what I was saying, though, or are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. With Chris McCaffrey, I think there's far less certainty that even when or if he comes back that he finishes the season, which makes Jordan yeah. Mason a far more valuable scenario here, in my opinion. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, realistically, you just got fucked coming into the season without, like, the real injury reports. Looking back, though, I guess we had enough of a little bit of a door. Christian where, like, McCaffrey, said, just drafted Christian McCaffrey said on Thursday, there's no way he doesn't play. Yeah. So, he's I mean, what, how are we supposed to – what, what do you believe? I put a video out uh, right before week one, and I put Jordan Mason as the thumbnail. Like, he was the number one player. I said, there's no reason why if you have Christian McCaffrey on your teams right now, you should not have Jordan Mason on your roster. Yeah. He should be on your team. Looking back, obviously, hindsight 2020, that's a very good take, but – it, it, there was enough evidence that showed that we should have had Jordan Mason on those rosters. Yeah. Well, thanks for the real session, everybody. I'm going to go try to see if I can add to the Jordan Mason I, trading I just, category. I just think that's like, if you're going to use a, a really, really early pick on a player, like that's you might injured. as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially if there's injury, you might as well have the back. I also feel like, but. okay, I, I'm going to, I'm going to push back on that narrative because yeah. it's and easy. It's, it's, it, it, no, 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 no. It's easy to say now. Oh yeah. Jordan Mason's going to get all the work. Hey, we did. That was all like, conjecture until well, week one. Okay. E- even if Jordan Mason, even that scenario, when, before we saw week one, you could say Jordan Mason might be the lead back, but no one expected him to get every single carry. Okay, I can hear you with that, but there was enough conversation that Jordan Mason had easily won the number two job. Elijah Mitchell was on the way, uh, on IR. Sure. Isaac Grando hadn't done shit. Like, Neither had Mason, though. We, what did Mason do? No, but there was so much camp hype about Mason as the lead number was. two. It, but it's, okay, but guys, do you know how much camp hype I can show you on players that didn't do anything? None. I'm, Every player that gets camp. True. I, I'm just saying that there <laughs> no, was. No, I'm saying there that you can, there's no evidence. way you can tell me beforehand that Jordan Mason was the clear handcuff that was going to pr- produce the same high range of outcomes. To me, that still was a very, very big conversation. Yeah, I'm. I'm not saying that we expected him to go out and do what he did week one. Right. Uh, but I think that there was enough all around from CMC's camp, from from all of the information that we got from Jordan Mason buzz that Jordan Mason was a he was a guy that. CMC managers should have been looking at, for sure, as the back end of their roster. I, I think there's a lot of range of outcomes, especially with how good that offense is with anybody back there, that they're looking at a 55-45 split with him and Garendo or any other body, and it looks the same. Then then my argument would be that you should have picked the one that you wanted of the two. <laughs> well, that I w- that's what I would do going into this week, but Garendo wasn't even a bit, like, didn't get a carry. I would have bid on Grando this week, right? If it was that way. Fair enough. So, I mean, like, I've seen, and we've seen this carousel where it continues to happen. Yeah. Just for the record, we have a full YouTube channel just following this league called Your Idiot League Mates. So, if you're interested in following our waiver wire, what happens throughout the week, the scores, all that kind of shit, all the shit talk within the office, that is the place to go. Which is where you should go right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we should end this video. We should absolutely end this video because we've been... Yeah, and I'm yeah. thirsty. And I, I got to. I got to get my ass. This is every, it's every week. You got to catch a flight. All right, appreciate you. y'all. We really be pushing it. Yeah, we love y'all. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. We'll be doing this every single Thursday. We got the rankings videos that went out yesterday. Uh, so hopefully, we're giving you as much content as you need to set some good lineups, win some championships this year. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, hey. and we'll see y'all when we see y'all next week. Hank, smoochies.